Hey everybody, welcome to Park It! Theme Parks Edition. My name is Jill and today's topic for my video is going to be Disneyland do's and don'ts. I'm going to tell you 10 do's and 10 don'ts at Disneyland. Number one, let's just jump right in. You are definitely going to want to have a Disney Max Pass. And in order to do that, you're going to need to download the Disneyland app if you don't have it already. So the Disney Max Pass is going to allow you to book fast passes from your phone. In my mind, that is the biggest benefit of having a Max Pass. It also comes with Photo Pass, and I actually made an entire video about what Disney Max Pass is. So if you are unfamiliar with it, or if you want a simple explanation, you can watch my video called Disney Max Pass Explained in Five Minutes, and I put a link in the description. Number two thing you want to do at Disneyland is wear comfortable shoes. Now, as you can see in this photo, I'm wearing some Pumas and my husband is wearing his Adidas. And they look like they might be comfortable, but they actually were not comfortable shoes because they did not have very good arch support. So you definitely want a shoe that has arch support. This is my Brooks Glycerin 14. It is a running shoe. I've had this shoe for three years. I used to run miles and miles every day in these shoes. And I also teach a fitness class in these shoes and they are so comfortable. So even being somewhat in shape, at the end of the day at Disneyland, my feet were hurting so badly. My husband's feet were hurting really badly too. And we were miserable and we were just talking about how much we wish we had worn shoes that had arch support. Sometimes there's a time to be cute and sometimes there's a time to be comfortable. And if you have a shoe that can accomplish both things, that's wonderful. But if you don't and you need to get a pair of comfortable shoes, get something like this and definitely err on the side of comfort. I included a link in my description for the Brooks Glycerin 14 if you want to know more about them. All right, moving on to the number three thing you need to do at Disneyland, and that is carry as little as possible in the parks. Now, I know that there are some people out there who might disagree with me. I've done it both ways, and I can tell you that my experience has been a lot more enjoyable just carrying as little as possible. The number four thing you want to do at Disneyland is you definitely want to bring a good camera with you. Now, some of you might be saying, well, you just told us not to carry a lot. Yes, that is true. But I will say that I'm really grateful that I had my Canon M50. It's a great camera because it's small, but it takes really good photos and it also has really good internal stabilization. If you want to take videos, you can attach a microphone very easily to the top of your Canon M50. And that's something that I really like about it. I have both a Nikon and a Canon, and I can say after having used both that I do think Canons are a little bit more user friendly. So if you're looking for a good camera, you might want to look into the Canon M50. Jumping into number five, I recommend taking a backpack to Disneyland that has good straps that are comfortable and a backpack that's lightweight. This is my low pro backpack. It's from Target. It's so comfortable. It's so lightweight. It didn't bother my back at all the whole day I was wearing it. There's some things that I think are really convenient about being able to put the backpack on its back, open it up like this, and then you can access everything inside really easily. A bottle or a pacifier or a snack or something like that. It's just nice to be able to lay it down, open it up, grab what you need really quickly versus having to dig through a regular backpack. It also comes with these Velcro inserts. You can configure those inserts however you want. I've configured mine in a way that it cradles my Nikon camera. This backpack was the perfect size to take on the Indiana Jones ride. I stuck it in between my feet and kind of held onto it throughout the ride. I have also taken it with me to several other theme parks and I was able to put it in a locker. Some of you might know those lockers are quite small, but this one just happens to fit perfectly. And you don't really want anything bigger than this. That is the Low Pro. I did put a link in the description if you want to know more about it. A tip that I have to go along with the number five thing you should do at Disneyland is to try to just have one person in your group carry the backpack. Jumping into number six. When you are at Disneyland, you definitely want to get some kind of a treat from Candy Palace. I like the way that it's decorated. I like the light fixtures. I like the charm. I like the music playing. And I like to be able to watch the Disneyland workers make some of the items. We were watching them make chocolate dipped pretzels. The smell alone, just walking in there, is just amazing. So. Definitely visit Candy Palace, get yourself a treat. If you've been there before, 
Let me know what your favorite treat was. I'm a big treat person. I have a huge sweet tooth. It's my biggest weakness in life. I wanna hear all about it. So comment below and let me know. The seventh thing you want to do when you're at Disneyland, if you are with people who enjoy seeing Disney characters, you will want to watch for them near the Splash Mountain exit. The reason why you want to watch for characters near Splash Mountain Exit is that there's a door where the cast members go in and out. So there's a lot of characters that walk by after they've been out visiting and greeting everybody. They walk back to that door and you can catch them on their way back to the door. We were able to see Tigger and some other characters and it was really fun. So if you are big into character sightings and greetings, then that's probably the place you want to be without having to stand in a huge line. Okay, jumping on to the number eight thing you should do at Disneyland. And that is you should talk with your group about potential problems that might arise before you get to the park. You'll want to talk about things like what to do if your group gets separated or what attractions you plan to ride that day if you have a general plan. There is going to come a time when we will have to stand in line, we will have to wait, we will have to be patient, we are going to get tired. Those things are just guaranteed. And so I think if you address those things with your group beforehand, especially if you are traveling with children, that's super helpful. And even if you're not traveling with children, I think it's still a good idea just to talk to your group. The ninth thing that I recommend that you do at Disneyland, if you can, I recommend only doing one park per day. Doing only one park per day is so much more relaxing. Park hopping is time consuming and it's expensive and it's especially hard on little kids because you've got to go all the way to the other entrance and you have to go through security again. Even if you have big kids with you, we went to Disney World with my daughter and she was eight and she still had a hard time walking and doing a lot of park hopping. So try to keep park hopping to a minimum. I have done it both ways and I can tell you that this last time when we just went to Disneyland and we had a max pass, it was the best Disney experience I've ever had. We had so much more time to take in our surroundings and enjoy the details and just enjoy our time in Disneyland. We weren't rushing to get to another park and it was nice to just stay in the park. The number 10 thing you should do at Disneyland is make sure that you have downtime. Make sure that you're not just rushing from attraction to attraction to attraction. Make sure that you actually have time to sit down, relax, eat your food, and just kind of chill out for a while. I feel like it's easy to just be go, go, going all the time, but I think people get really grumpy that way. So make sure you stop and take a break. And I think that this is applicable for anyone. I feel like everyone needs a break. Obviously kids, Little kids need more of a break, of course, but that is my recommendation. I can't emphasize it enough. My husband and I had some downtime this last time. We just sat, we ate, and it was wonderful. So those are the do's. Now on to the don'ts. So number one, do not delay booking a fast pass for Hyperspace Mountain or Radiator Springs Racers. Both of these attractions will run out of fast passes. It's almost guaranteed. Just make sure that you book your fast passes right away for those attractions, or when you get to the park, when it opens, just head to one of those attractions so that you can get right on. Another reason why you don't wanna delay riding popular attractions is that you don't know if there's going to be a problem with those attractions later. They could break down or have a problem, and you wanna make sure that you've had a chance to ride those attractions. So. Don't delay in booking fast passes for Radiator Springs Racers or Hyperspace Mountain. Okay, moving on to the number two, don't. Do not, I repeat, do not go to Disneyland when the castle is under construction. There I was as a photographer and I couldn't get any photos of the castle. I couldn't get any videos of the castle. It's such a huge icon in the park and it's really sad when you can't get your photo taken by it. They had a big cover over the castle and it looked so strange. It was the weirdest thing. The number three don't that I wanna talk about at Disneyland is carrying a camera bag. Do not carry a camera bag. I made this mistake when I was there and it was miserable. My shoulder hurt, my neck hurt. I just did not like the experience. So don't do it. Moving on to the number four don't at Disneyland. Do not forget your portable charger. 
I got to Disneyland and I had forgotten my portable charger. My phone battery died and then I couldn't access any of the fast passes on my app. If your phone battery dies or you don't have service or something isn't working with your phone, you can still access your fast passes if you use your paper park entrance ticket. The problem is, is I feel like a lot of people don't keep track of this. So just make sure you keep track of it in a zipped pocket, but even better, bring your portable charger. Disney has portable chargers that you can rent, but it will cost you about $30. That's the current price as of 2019. Those portable chargers are just ones that you rent. You do not keep them. They do come pre-charged. So if you have to rent one, it's good to know that you have an option, but this portable charger was like $5 from Target. I wish I would have just taken this and then my phone could have been charged and I wouldn't have had a problem. So don't forget your portable charger. The number five Disneyland don't is do not forget your jacket. This is a Marmot windbreaker. I can scrunch it up and I could fit it into my backpack. It was better than having a heavy hooded sweatshirt or a coat and even in the summertime, just temperatures can get cooler at night at Disneyland. So you want to make sure that you have a jacket. Try to have a lightweight one that you can make small to fit in your backpack. Moving on to the number six don't at Disneyland. Don't forget to make your dining reservations way in advance. My husband and I really wanted to go to the Blue Bayou and we went to try to get in last minute and we were told that we could not get in for the entire day. Sometimes they have cancellations, but not very often because people can book their dining reservations way in advance. I'm not sure how far in advance you can book them. Moving on to the number seven, don't. If you see a souvenir that you like, don't skip buying it. I saw several souvenirs and I thought, ooh, I'll come back and get that. And then guess what? We never made it back. If you see something you like, just purchase it right then. So that leads me to the number eight, don't, which is don't carry souvenirs around with you. I think that that's another reason why a lot of people don't buy their souvenir that they like right when they see it is because they think they have to carry it around. And one thing I didn't know and my husband didn't know is that you can actually keep your souvenirs at the front. When you exit, you can easily pick them up. Or if you're staying on site, you can have them sent to your Disneyland hotel room. Don't carry souvenirs around with you. Moving on to the number nine don't on my list, and that is don't over plan. This is a really hard one for me because I am a huge planner and I like to have an agenda and I like to know what's gonna happen. There's definitely something to be said for being flexible and recognizing that certain attractions will break down Sometimes you might not feel like eating what you planned on eating. Sometimes you might want to go to a different part of the park. Sometimes you might have a fast pass and you decide that you don't want to use that fast pass. We had a fast pass for Splash Mountain and then we realized that we didn't want to get wet. And remember that it will take away from the experience if you can't be flexible. And I say that from personal experience. There was one particular trip that I went on where I was really rigid and really strict about my itinerary and I think I kind of ruined it for some of the people in my group. If you have to take something off the agenda, if you have to skip one of your fast passes, if you decide to eat somewhere else, just go with it. I think you'll have a much more pleasant experience with your group. Moving on to the number 10 don't on my list, and that is don't miss the details. There's so many details included at Disneyland. It's absolutely amazing. Everything from little details inside the attractions or even when you're waiting in line for Haunted Mansion. Looking around you at the landscaping and the flowers and the trees. Take some time to pause and take it all in. Try taking photos during the golden hour, which is an hour before sunset. That's what I would recommend. That's a good time to take in those details. Okay, so that wraps up my Disneyland do's and don'ts video. Just a little review for the do's. Number one, get a max pass. Number two, wear comfortable shoes that have arch support. Number three, carry as little as possible with you in the parks. Number four, bring a good camera that's not too big. Number five, carry a comfortable backpack that's lightweight that has comfortable straps. Number six, get a treat from Candy Palace. Number seven, watch for characters near the Splash Mountain exit. Number eight, talk to your group about potential problems that might arise before you get to one of the parks. Number nine, try to do one park per day if you can and try to avoid park hopping. Number 10, make sure that you have some downtime included in your day. Now on to the don'ts. Don't delay riding Hyperspace Mountain or 
Radiator Springs racers and make sure you get fast passes for these attractions right away. Number two, don't visit Disneyland when the castle is under construction. Number three, do not take a camera bag with you. Use a backpack instead and see the do number five on my list. Number six, don't forget to make your dining reservations. Otherwise you will be disappointed. Number seven, don't wait to buy a souvenir that you like. And that leads to number eight, which is don't feel like you have to carry around the souvenir once you've bought it. You can have guest services hold it for you at the entrance so that you can pick it up when you leave. Number nine, don't over plan. And number 10, don't miss the details. Thank you for watching my Disneyland do's and don'ts video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button, share my video, and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I hope you'll think of Park It Theme Parks Edition whenever you are planning theme park travel, and I hope we can connect soon.